What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be doing a quick uh, overview on this 2023 Ford F-150 that I purchased a few months ago. Uh, on the clock right now, I got about 7,000 miles, and so far, it's been a pretty good truck. I uh, just kind of want to touch base on, you know, five things I really like about this truck, five things I hate, and then just a few, uh, a few little extras here and there. First on the list, and this isn't in particular order, I love the appearance of this truck. I like the design here on the fender. Uh, like on my Chevy, it's got actual fenders, fender flares, or whatever you want to call them. But here they made like an indention, so I love that. So here in the front, they uh, color matched the bumper and the grill. These trim pieces right here, the overall STX uh, appearance package. The color matching goes very well. Headlights on the 21s, I believe, they don't have the black housing. And on these, as you can see, the black housing just gives it that more of a aggressive, sporty performance look, in my opinion. Hey, I'm gonna color match the the mirror caps and the handles. Yeah, I think color matching that will give it a way better uh, overall appearance. I love that this truck came with the sidestep. On my Chevy, for some reason, I just don't like how it looks with any sidestep, so I took that off. It came originally with the chrome sidestep, so I just took that off on my Chevy, but I really like how these uh, F-150s look with that. Wheels and tire combo, 75, 60, 20. And these wheels look very nice on this truck. You can't go wrong with it. So yeah, any any kind of truck that you get, 21 and up, the wheels look amazing. And these stock tires look a bit beefier, even with this uh, two and 2.3 inch level that I installed, it just gives it, uh, Still an aggressive look with these uh, arc tires. I am gonna upgrade to some 30, 34s, hopefully, once I wear these out. But as of right now, it's looking really good, even with this 2.3 inch level. And that's another thing I wanna touch base on. These trucks do look good, even from factory with the slight rake. But I went ahead and installed that 2.3 2 inch level in the front just to give it more of a an off-road aggressive look with that slight rake. Here's another side shot. I don't know why, but for some reason, these plastic caps on the top, those two just give it like a nice aggressive look as well. Uh, coming into the back, just the overall clean design, in my opinion, with the tailgate. Also, I do plan on color matching the black here, color matching the handle and this black portion. Double tip outlets either here or move them up to the front, put like a Corsa cat back exhaust. But as of right now, the stock looks, looks fine. But yeah, guys, overall, I'm really, really liking this truck. Uh, second, the performance. It's got the 5.0 in it. That being said, it's I think it produces about 400 horsepower, 410 pound-feet of torque, which is plenty, in my opinion. Coming from my Silverado to this, it's just, this thing picks up and goes. There is a lot of aftermarket parts for this truck. If you're looking for performance, you can add a Whipple on this thing, get you upwards of 700 plus horsepower and a few other things that you can do if you don't want to go too aggressive. Third, fuel economy. Man, this thing just does well with the fuel economy, guys. It, that is a pro to this, but it could be a con. The reason why you get good fuel economy is because of that cylinder deactivation. I was cruising at 70 miles an hour. I did roughly 35 miles in my trip. The, the truck inside read uh, 23 miles to the gallon. That was at 77 degrees back home, like at six in the morning, so. Also, when I was going 65 miles an hour, it gave me 25.8 miles to the gallon. That was a 23 mile trip. And finally, I picked it up to about 74 miles per hour. And that trip was 12.6 miles and it read 22.3 miles to the gallon. So yeah, guys, this truck does give very good fuel economy. In the city, I, I'll say with, with my driving habits, I've seen anywhere from 15 to about 17 miles to the gallon. And that's just in a regular mode. This truck also has sport mode and a few other modes, but that's just my experience. The fourth is the comfort. The ride on this, guys, is very smooth. Even with the level, I didn't lose any uh, comfort. Suspension-wise, inside, it's very nice as well. The interior is cloth, which usually I'm not a big fan of, but it's very comfortable, guys. These seats are very comfortable. There is no adjustment that you really need to do. Honestly, all you get is just uh, this right here. 
and you can adjust this back portion left front or back and this will of course will adjust this back portion here but overall i mean it's very comfortable guys just the overall drivability much space you have inside the ac i mean it blows cold air um overall it's a good comfort uh, your bang for buck on this guys it's in my opinion it's probably one of the best routes that you can go with this stx package you can also get the work truck but i don't think it comes with uh color matching bumpers it's just a black and you can upgrade those over time if you want to paint them or or wrap them but it's this economy that we're in 50k for a truck like this is a lot of money i understand that especially for the everyday working man the average person makes anywhere from 50 000 to seventy thousand a year for a family's household I don't quote me on that but just with that being said it is hard to afford a 50k truck those who are very fortunate enough I would say this would be a good go-to if you're not trying to spend upwards of 70 to 80 thousand on just a f-150 or a pickup truck a gasser at that um diesels it's a different story different ball game but but yeah guys this gets you four wheel drive stx appearance package it looks good exterior wise interior it's com comfortable and all the other things that i just mentioned on this list but that is going to be the fifth and final thing that i like about this truck let's go ahead and get into the hate <clears throat> for one and like i said this isn't in order but number one is the stock halogen bulbs for some reason these bulbs just suck i drove this truck out here to work i work out here in west texas so a lot of mileage that i put on the highways and it's hard to see at times with these stock halogen bulbs so that's one of the first things i did guys i changed the stock halogen bulbs to some leds and i adjusted the the level on them you can just adjust the level just pop the hood and there's a little deal right up on top that you can screw with the screwdrivers move it left to right and it'll adjust in if you move it just a little bit higher i don't get people flashing their high beams at me all is good I definitely one thing i did not like is the stock halogen bulbs also replace the fog lights in the rear it's fine no big deal i did install i did install some rear uh, backup lights so they're a lot brighter when i back up helps with the camera second is the key fob now mind you the key fob's not a big big issue the shape of it it's not it's not bad standard unlock lock and then alarm and your key is this button here that you got to press to to expose the key so I do like this feature that you can turn on the truck with the key. Over time, I kind of just like the simplicity of things. So it is nice to just be able to turn it with the key. But yeah, I don't know why they don't install remote on these key fobs. There is a part that you can buy off Amazon. It's about 130 bucks. It's a black uh, electrical box that goes in the uh, glove box. Uh, drop this, right? Drop this and then drop it completely. And you'll have access to the back part here. There's a couple plugs you got to unplug and then plug in that little black box adapter deal once you do all that you close it up and you're able to have remote start on your key but i'm not trying to spend 130 bucks to do that when i have remote start already in my ford pass it's an app that uh ford ford has now you can download it when you buy these newer trucks or whatever and through that app you're able to remote start your your vehicle you can do a lock and unlock from anywhere be able to see other cool features like tire pressure your fuel tank also the location which is pretty cool so like i said it's not a terrible hate because i can still turn it on remotely with my phone but it would be nice to have it on my key third is power seating this truck does not have power seating like i just mentioned earlier with comfort my wife does drive this truck from time to time and she wishes that the seat could move up more so that she has better view because she is short, so she doesn't have full visibility like I do. Um, so she would like that feature just to move it up a little bit higher. But like I said, the comfort's still good, guys. You don't really need any movement down here, but I do wish they did provide power seating at least. I do understand they put cloth seats, but it'd be nice if we had power seating. Also, there is no head adjustment here, which I don't like. You can't move it like you normally can, this way or that way. But like I said, comfort is still good, guys. Uh, fourth is the side mirrors. Now, these side mirrors are awesome. I like the shape of them. Uh, but the, my only issue with these side mirrors is this small one is not adjustable. I wish you could adjust this to your liking. These are adjustable, this whole thing. But like I said, this small one, you just you can't adjust it. I don't know why they did that. But there's no way that you can adjust it. It just moves with this whole mirror. 
but hey, you can still see. I'm fine with these. I can see plenty, so it's no big deal. Number five is the AC. It does blow very cold, but at times while I'm driving, this is during my drives out here to work. I drive about eight to 12 hours at times to get to work. And a couple times throughout the drive, I'll have my setting for my AC down here. It'll be like one or two dials, right? And every now and again, the AC will just blow full go. Like if I had my AC at full blast and it's, mind you, down here, it'll read you one or two little dials wherever I'm, I have it set at. And it's blowing like if I have it full go. So, and that'll last for about two, three, four minutes, just blowing full go and I get cold. <clears throat> Normally I drive with the sweater, but I still feel the coldness even with the sweater at nighttime. And I just suck it up and I let it go. Um, I'm not sure why it does that, but like I said, it's just something that I don't like on this truck and it doesn't do it all the time. Maybe like on my, my drive out here to work, it'll do it like once or twice for about three to five minutes. It'll just blow to the max, went down here. It just reads you like one or two little dials, the light, I mean. But yeah, other than that, those are the five things I don't like about this truck. Very minute things, guys. All right, guys, unfortunately, I'm gonna add one more to the hate list just because I just remembered about it and it happened to me just now. This uh, this screen here, it hasn't happened many times since I've owned the truck. Like I said, I have 7,400 miles, owned it for four months, I believe, four or five months. And in that in that time period, I've had issues with this screen where it just it just locks itself like I could it just and it'll lock itself on whatever I could be in music I could be in music and it'll just lock itself there I can be on maps and it'll lock itself there and I can't get out of it or it'll just go black <clears throat> it's happened maybe four or five times as of right now the way to the way I've been fixing it is you go ahead and press the volume button and this uh button right here to skip to the next track I've press and hold both of them for about five to ten seconds and it'll it'll essentially reset itself the screen will go black and then it'll come back up as if you were first getting in your truck also the the sync 4 sync 5 i don't know what it has on this truck it automatically connects your phone which is another comfort that i like which is part of the comfort that i mentioned on on the things i love about this truck it automatically connects you don't need a wire i just connected because i need to charge my phone now i do have three add-ons the cruise control on this truck I'll show you real quick so the cruise control the way it works all you got to do is press this button right here and it automatically sets itself on my chevy the cruise control is is on this right here there's a little dial here that you got to press to the right and then you got to push the, this button here to set it but i do like the the ease of use on this truck all you got to do is press this button and it sets itself uh, the second is the interior i love that they matched everything all black the panels on the door is all black here is all black i've seen some that are two-tone it's like a beige or like a cream here beige cream here the panels i think are different color and then the top as well the headliner and i like that they did all black here on my silverado everything was all black on the inside but for some reason the headliner and the handles that they put up here were beige so i did change that out on my silverado and made it all all uh, peter like that dark peter gray or blackish and it just it just ties in the whole interior a lot better guys so that's what i do like about this truck is the all black interior everything just flows real nice and it's a very clean look the third thing is the shift points on this truck like i mentioned a big pro is the fuel economy but the downside to that is this truck does have cylinder deactivation now what that means is you're going to go from eight cylinders to i guess four cylinders when you're driving on highway speeds when your truck's not detecting a, a load or when you're flooring it it's just going to work on four cylinders from my understanding that is the con to, to the fuel economy but as of right now i haven't had any weird issues with cylinder deactivation i haven't had no weird noises no weird no weird shifting points or anything of that nature but i do notice when it kicks on from my driving habits, it kicks on when I'm in the highway at at cruising speeds. I go 70, 75, and I hit a I hit a a hill. The tenth gear on your dash go from eight, and you'll feel the kick. I mean, it's not like a it's not like the transmission slipping or kicks weird, but you'll feel once it shifts from tenth to eight back to back down to eighth gear, you feel the power, and it kind of puts you puts your back on the seat. And I think that's when it shifts from four cylinders to eight. 
so you can uh you can climb up that hill or if you're towing something or whatever but but yeah guys that's that's one thing i did notice from the cylinder deactivation but yeah guys these are all the things that i love and hate and a few add-ons about this truck if you guys are considering purchasing a truck like this i highly recommend it this has been a really good truck for me so far like i said i've had about i have about 7500 miles on this thing i've done two oil changes my, my first oil change was at 2000 just just to get the braking period out of the way and then i went back for a 5000 mile oil change from the dealership and i'll be going every 5000 miles i'm not going to go to seven or eight or push it or do 3000 miles i think i'll go 5000 miles on this truck i do have warranty that i did purchase so naturally this truck comes with five years, 60,000 powertrain, I believe. But the thing is, and I don't know if you guys have had a similar issue or experience, but the salesman, when I was doing all the final paperwork and financing department, the guy said on these newer trucks, or I don't know if he said Ford in general did, new, did some changes, but he did say the powertrain doesn't fully cover like the transmission, for example, is what he said, since it's a lot of electrical components. He did say if we, if, uh, if they pinpointed it to an electrical issue that they wouldn't warranty it. So he did say it's a partial warranty. But if I get the extended warranty, it would cover me. It was five years, 100,000 miles or six years, 80,000 miles. And I decided to go with the guys because I'm not trying to risk driving out here to work and have an issue where potentially they're not going to fully cover. And with that warranty, it cost me about 2,200 bucks for those five years and, uh, and an additional 40,000 miles. So yeah, now I have five years, 100,000 mile warranty, full powertrain. So if any issues happen, I hope I don't have to fight Ford to fix this or worry about how I drive this truck and be soft with it. I'm just gonna drive it and I'll provide future results on how the overall experience has been, how the motors held up, the transmission, all that good stuff. So yeah, guys, I'm looking forward to see how this truck is gonna hold up uh, in its lifetime. Hopefully I get to keep this truck and pay it off. I do like this truck a lot. I have my Silverado that I purchased and paid off. So hopefully I could do the same with this and have two great trucks, two good platforms in my opinion. So like I said, I got plenty more videos coming for this truck. If you stuck around this long, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.